In this session, we are going to put a top surface on this northernmost portion of our corridor model. To do that, all we have to do is tell Civil 3D the data we need to triangulate to. Now, at first, that may seem like it would be difficult, but really, all the work's been done for us. If you'll indulge me for just a second, I'm going to zoom in on one of these assemblies down below. These assemblies represent a collection of sub-assemblies. Right here, I have a Florida DOT lane that we selected earlier. Let's take a look at that lane. I'm going to select the assembly, and I'll come up and choose Tool Palette. I will then select the Lanes tab, and I'll right-click on the F.Lane, and I'll choose Help. Then I'll drag down to the bottom of the documentation. Right here we can see that this lane is made up of several links, and each of these links is assigned a code. The top link contains the code Top, Pave, and Slope label. This coding is synonymous with all of the subassembly parts. Let me close this. We'll pan this over. This assembly also uses a Type F curb and gutter. Let me jump to the curb and gutter tab. I'll right click on Type F and I'll choose Help. Let's drag this down to the bottom. Here we can see all of the top links include the top code. So to build a top surface, all I have to do is tell Civil 3D, I want you to triangulate to every link that includes a top code. Before we leave, take a look at these points. Each of these points is also coded. We've got a point called back of curb, this one's called face of curb, and this one's called flow line gutter. These points are used to create the longitudinal lines in our corridor model. Let me close this and I'll press escape. Let's pan this back up. And I'm going to hover over this feature line. We can see this one's called Back Curb. This one's called Face Curb. And right here I have Flow Line Gutter. Each time our assembly is inserted along the corridor model, Civil 3D creates these feature lines as a way of connecting those dots. Sometimes these feature lines will also need to be included in the surface model. Let's create a top surface for this corridor. I'll do that by selecting the corridor. I'll come up and choose Corridor Properties. I will then select the Surfaces tab. I'm going to click to create a new surface, and I'll call this SR7 North Top. For the surface style, I'm going to choose an existing one here. We'll choose Triangles 1 and 1 Existing Green. This one shows up well on screen, and I'll click OK. At this point, the surface has been created. All I have to do is add data to it. I'll do that using these menus up above. I'd like to add any links that include the top code. Let me click the Add button to add that data to the surface. I'd like to add those links as break lines. This will ensure my triangulation will not cross those links. For overhang correction, I'm going to select Top Links. This will ensure if I have any vertical faces in my surface that the triangulation will wrap around those properly. Let's do one more thing. I'm going to add a boundary. I'll do that by going to the Boundaries tab. I'll right click on the surface that I just created and I'll choose Corridor Extents as Outer Boundary. This will ensure that I'm not triangulating outside the boundary of my corridor model. When I'm finished, I'll choose OK. I'll rebuild the corridor. Let me press Escape to deselect the corridor. I will select my surface, and I'll come up and choose Object Viewer, and we'll take a look. I'm going to zoom in, and we'll orbit this around. We can see that we have nice definition on the curb and gutter. If I zoom in a little closer, we can see the traffic separator looks good. My Type F curb and gutter looks good here. It looks like I've got an issue on this side. If I orbit this around, it looks like I have the same sawtooth issue over here. Let's zoom in a little closer. Here I appear to have an elevational issue. Now that we've identified some problems, let's make some corrections. I'm going to correct the sawtooths first. To do that, we'll add additional feature lines to the surface data. Let me close the object viewer. And I'll press Escape. I'm going to zoom in and select the corridor. I'll choose Corridor Properties. We'll go to the Surfaces tab. We'll expand this, and I'll select the surface. I'm going to come up and open the Data Types menu, and I'll choose Feature Lines. I'd like to add the Back of Curb feature line. I'd like to add the face of curb feature line, and I'd like to add the flow line gutter feature line. These will now act as additional brake lines in my surface model. Let's click OK. We'll rebuild the corridor. I will then select the surface. We'll go back to Object Viewer. We'll tip this up and zoom in and take a look. There we go. We can see the curb and gutter looks much better now. Let's pan this down a little further, and I'll zoom in. Here I have an elevational issue. This is the transition from my Type F curb to the Type D curb. The problem I'm having here is the Type F curb includes a 2% downward gutter slope, whereas the Type D curb does not. We can see the lane travels upward, continues here at 2%. This is where dynamic model updates come in handy. What if I went to my assembly and just updated the cross-section of my curb? Based on our design and our lane slopes, we could probably get away with reverse pitch curb and gutter here. I'm going to close the object viewer and I'll press escape. Let's pan down to the assembly, SR7 traffic median. I'll select both of my type F curb and gutter. I'll open up the properties palette and we'll drag this down. We'll change the adjacent lane slope from negative 2% 
to 2%. I'll press escape. You can see the slope now matches the lane. Note that when I made that change, my link to marked point and marked point jumped out of place. Let's fix these. I'll select the link. I'll choose move. We'll snap that back to the top back of curb. I'll select my marked point. I'll choose move and we'll move this to the top back of curb. Let's pan this back up. I'll select the corridor and we'll choose rebuild, which updates the surface. I'll select the surface. We'll go to object viewer tip this up and we'll zoom in and take a look. Here we can see the transition works a lot better using that new gutter slope. Based on our design this is probably the best solution to correct this issue. Since this is a training example though let's put things back the way they were. I'm going to close this. Let's back up and we'll go back down to our assembly. I'll select both of the type F curbs. We'll put these back to a negative two percent and then I'll quickly fix my link and my marked point. We'll go back to the corridor model. I'll rebuild and then we'll take a look at the surface again. Now what if this curb section represented our true design intent? Let's look at another way that we can blend these two curb sections together. In this case, I'm going to adjust the gutter slope for this last assembly insertion only. I can do that by assigning an override. Let's try that. I'm going to close the object viewer. I'll press escape. I'm going to select the surface and I'll right click and we'll go to display order. Let's push this to the back for a second. It'll make it easier to select the corridor model. Let's pan this down and I'm going to select the corridor from this assembly right here just before the transition. I will then go to the section editor. Let's close the tool palette momentarily. I'll zoom in and I am going to open this menu. I'll choose zoom to an offset and elevation just to lock that view on screen. Let's walk forward until we get to the traffic separator right there. Let's back up one station so right here, this is the last assembly insertion containing the Type F curb and gutter. Let's change the curb gutter slopes for this insertion only. I'm going to open the parameter editor. Let me collapse up some of this information. Here we can see the assembly insertion at this location. Here's the right side and the left side. Let me expand right and I'll collapse some of these components. Right here we have the right curb and gutter on the inside. Let me expand that. Notice right here we can see the same settings that we have at the properties palette. This gives us granular control over each component at each assembly insertion. I'm going to make a change to the adjacent lane slope. Change this from negative 2% to 2. You can see that change on screen. Also notice we've added an override at this station. Let's collapse this and I'm going to hold my control key and I'll drag this palette to the other side. Let's open up the left side. Here we have the left curb and gutter inside. We'll change the adjacent lane slope to 2%. I'll close the palette. I'll press escape. Right here we can see that the surface is not yet caught up to the change in the corridor model. That's all right. I have a couple more changes. You can see just like we saw in the assembly, the link and the marked point have shifted. To fix this, I'm going to hold my control key and I'll select the link. This gives me a series of grips. I'll select this grip on the left side and I'm going to manually place this at the top bag of curb. Let me zoom out. I will control click on this again. I'll click the grip on the other side and then I'll place this to the top back of curb on the right. No need to move the marked point. I am now manually controlling this link. I'll press escape when finished and then I'm going to come up and click the update corridor button. This will rebuild the model and update any surfaces. Let's click close. I'll select the surface. We'll go to object viewer. I'll tip this up and we'll zoom in and take a closer look. So in the event our design required that negative 2% gutter slope, I can maintain that all the way up to the end until I get to that last assembly insertion where I've reversed the slope direction. Now that I've made this change, let's assume this is our design intent. Next we'll add some overrides to the other end of this median. I'll close the object viewer and I'll press escape. Let's pan this up and I'm going to select the corridor from this assembly insertion. Now notice I'm not able to make the selection at this point. Occasionally this will happen when we jump out of the section editor. If this happens we can always select the corridor from the prospector tab. Let's pan this down. I'll go to the corridors group. I'm going to right click on SR7 North and I'll choose select. 
and then I'll go to the section editor. Since I did not select the corridor from an assembly insertion, I'm starting at the end of the alignment stationing. Let me open this menu and I'll choose region stations. That takes me to the first region station in the corridor. I will then open this middle menu and the area in the median was in the 105 to 106 range. Let's jump to 105.25. I'll zoom in and I'll lock this view on screen. I will then step backward until we get to the traffic median. We'll zoom in a little closer and I'll lock the view. If I step forward, this is the very first assembly insertion containing the Type F curb and gutter. Let's add some overrides to the gutter slopes. I'll choose Parameter Editor, and we'll do the left side first this time. Right here we have left curb and gutter inside. I'm going to expand that. I'll change the adjacent lane slope to 2%. We'll drag the pallet over to the other side. We'll take care of the right curb gutter inside. We'll change the adjacent lane slope. I'll close the pallet when finished. I will control click on the link and I will manually place that to the top back of curb. I'll control click on it again and we'll move it to the top back of curb on the other side. When I'm finished I'll press escape. I'll come up and choose update corridor. I'll close the section editor. Let's select the surface one more time. I'll go to object viewer and I'm going to spin this around. I'm going to use this edge on the view cube. We'll tip this up and we'll zoom in on the other end. Once again we can see the negative 2% gutter slope until we get to that last insertion where it pulls up to a positive 2%. As you start adding overrides to a corridor model you may ask yourself how can I keep track of all the stations where I've assigned overrides. Let's take a look. I'm going to close the object viewer and I will select the corridor. We'll go to corridor properties I'll select the Parameters tab, and if we look down here on the right side, there is an Overrides column. Just for a second, I am going to select the middle region, and then I'll come down and click the Overrides Ellipsis button, and right here we can see the stations in this region where we've assigned overrides. From here, I can select a station and remove the overrides if I wish, or I could delete all the overrides. I'm going to close the dialog box. Let's close the Corridor Properties. I'll press Escape. We can also see the overridden stations in the Section Editor. I'm going to select the corridor. I'll come up and choose Section Editor. From here in the Station Selection panel, I'll open this menu to the left and I'll choose Overridden Stations. Now using the middle menu, I can see only the stations that include overrides, and I can jump to those directly. Now that I've reviewed my overridden stations, I'm going to click the X to close the Section Editor. I'll press Escape to deselect and we'll back up. At this point we will say that our top surface is now in good order, it matches our design intent. In the next session we will create the top surface for this lower corridor model.